What's going on? Well, <laughs> Did the NFL's <laughs> long national nightmare is finally over. It is, right? It's coming? That's it. This is great news for all of the owners. All the other 31 owners are thrilled to be finally rid of Dan Snyder. He has no friends left. His last friend among the membership was Jerry Jones, who protected him for a long time. I think even as recently as last year. But the NFL membership is thrilled. I think you're right. It will be a unanimous vote later today in Minneapolis. And the Snyder era is finally over. And the reason for that is why? I mean, why Why now? Why would Dan Snyder, after all this time and saying, I'm not going to do this, I am not changing the franchise team's name, I am not selling, I have no interest in selling, I am here, get used to it, I'm going to buy up radio stations and everything else so I can squelch dissent and and do things that uh, no other you know member, it seems, in the National Football League would ever think of doing. Um, why now, Don? Two reasons. One is he has led a toxic workplace, has embarrassed his fellow owners. There are sexual misconduct allegations still ongoing that are being investigated by Mary Jo White. Uh, He just caused a lot of heartburn to the members. Uh, We reported, Rich, just last week at ESPN.com that he was actually free and clear last October, and yet he was one of the people responsible for those John Gruden email leaks, uh, which woke up Congress. There was a congressional investigation launched just a week after those leaks, and that led to even more allegations. There's a federal criminal investigation about financial improprieties going on in Virginia, as we've reported on. So that, that's, that's one reason. The other reason, though, and it's a big reason when it comes to the way the NFL owners view him, is he has been costing them money. Hmm. That is a big no-no among the membership. How so? His team has been last in attendance Mm -hmm. in the NFL the last couple of years. The FedEx field is ranked the worst stadium in the league. It's crumbling. Snyder can't get a new stadium. He ran out of options to try to build back this once storied franchise. And so that's the other reason he's been shown the door. So enough was finally enough because it never felt to me that he would ever sell, never wanted to sell. This is the team he grew up loving. Um, He got it for a song. Um, Always was just going to stand firm, stand his ground. But was was it the fact that he couldn't get a new deal in D.C. because nobody wanted to deal with him? Was truly the that's final straw. Part of it. Is that it? Yeah, absolutely, Rich. That that's a big part of it. The co- costing his fellow owners money. And remember, there was also the allegation that he had two separate sets of books. <sighs> he was hiding money from them. But we did a story at ESPN last October. I did it with my colleagues Seth Wickersham and Tisha Thompson that revealed that Snyder actually was telling fellow owners that he had dug up dirt on owners and Commissioner Roger Goodell. That story landed in mid-October of last year. Uh, If you remember, Jim Ursay came out in an owner's meeting just a week later and basically said, you know, we have to begin to think here among the owners of showing Snyder the door. And then just a few weeks after our story landed, Snyder announced that he was going to investigate selling the team. I think any goodwill that he might have had left, certainly with Jerry Jones, went out the window when it was discovered that a partner, somebody who they are in partnership with, is actually running around saying, I've got dirt, and if you try to take my franchise away, I am going to blow you all up. That was, I think, also part of the final straw, which has led to today. So how much does he walk away with, Don? Well, he's selling for uh, an American fran- NFL, well, it's actually an American sports franchise record of $6.05 billion to Josh Harris and the Josh Harris Group. But he owes about a billion dollars on that. It's okay. kind of a, it's like a home equity loan. Yeah, he's yeah. been, he's yep. been taking money out, uh, uh, and, and his former limited partner said he's been using the team as his personal piggy bank uh, for years. So he owes a billion dollars on top of it. But, yes, he walks away with about $5 billion huh. uh, for being arguably the worst NFL owner in history. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll give you the floor five on what, what five Powerball jackpots. Right? That's uh, yes, that's yes. true. Um, I'll give you the floor. And really, you you would call Dan Snyder the worst NFL owner in the history of the league, Don? Really? I think so, Rich. Uh, George Preston Marshall was the first owner of the Redskins. He's actually the man who coined the the term Redskins. Um, he was the last holdout to integrate his team in the early 60s. He was a big supporter of racial integration, uh, a racial separation, I should say. Mm-hmm. And he was forced to segregate, he was forced to integrate his team in the early 60s by the Kennedy administration. Um, so I would put George Preston Marshall in Snyder's league, but I think I think Snyder goes down uh, as the worst. Remember, you know, you, you made reference to it, when Snyder came in in 1999, he was 34 years old, and this is a guy who rooted for the Redskins his entire life. It was his boyhood team, and he was seen among the owners and even Paul Tagliabue as the perfect person to own a team. And when he was introduced in 99, he said, I'm all about winning. And if you look at that standard, only one playoff win in 2005 – a 42% winning percentage. Uh, you know, he failed miserably at what he set out to do, and then all of the off-field stuff. I think it. I think it makes him the worst, even worse than George Preston Marshall. Rich, catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.